everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Captured effortlessly, that's the way it was. Happened so naturally, I did not know. We are going to have a really interesting conversation about some new technology and a research project that you can get in on for free and even make a little money and um, pocket the, uh, the hardware to boot with this. So before we dive into that, though, I just want to, again, thank our audience. You guys are so gracious and so generous with your likes, your clicks and shares of our program. You have really expanded our brand footprint here at Alzheimer Speaks all around the world. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot. And um, those likes, clicks, and shares are doing a lot more than what you think they're doing. And so I hope that you will continue to, to spread the word of our work here. I would also like to have you think about maybe you should be our next guest because we raise everyone's voice. So if you are living with dementia, if you are a family or a friend caring for a loved one with dementia, if you have a business that serves this population, or maybe you're a researcher, maybe you're an author, maybe you um, are an advocate, a singer, a songwriter, uh, a movie director. We've had everybody on this show and from all over the world, and we'd love to have you too. So just reach out to me, go to alzheimerspeaks.com. And there's a big contact button in the upper right hand corner and you can choose the mode you want to get a hold of me and I'd love love to talk to you a little bit more um, about that. I also want to just give a shout out to businesses who might be listening because we can help you with your brand footprint too because we have all kinds of media outlets where we can help share your content and you know what you're doing to to make life better for people uh, diagnosed and those that are caring for them. Now I um, always like to give out a few shout outs and so first I want to shout out to Keith Gallus. I don't know if you know him or not but he has been an executive director in senior housing for 20 years. He has heard all of the questions that family has and so he's been kind enough to pull all that information together and put it into book form. And his book is called Parental Dementia, a guide through all the difficult questions. And each chapter addresses a different common question that families have. And you can now get his book at Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Noble. It is also an ebook. Or you can go directly to his website, which is parentaldementia.com and enter in the discount code Lori, L-O-R-I, and uh, save $5.99, so nothing wrong with that. And if you don't need it, it might be something uh, good as a giveaway for your business. It might be a great gift for a friend or a family member who is, who is struggling. Uh, you know, there's lots of different uses. And once you read it, pass it on, you know, don't just let it sit on the shelf, let that knowledge uh, spread. I also want to give a shout out to the Brain Health and Research Institute. Our friend there, Mary Kay Ross, is doing just phenomenal work um, in terms of prevention and, and maintenance um, regarding neuroscience. And her team is, uh, has really pulled together some really cool things. So check them out. Um, you just can go to brainhealthandresearch.com for more information. Another place that is in need of some help right now is the University of Minnesota. They are in need of volunteers for a brain imaging study that they're doing. And you have to be between 60 and 89. You have to be in good health and you can't have any type of um, neurological history or major psychotic disorder in order to participate in this. And you can make up to $600 in compensation. So you can learn more uh, by going to, uh, I'm going to have you call. I think that'll be easiest. Uh, 612-625-7000. 
3246-612-625-3246. And let's see, then I always like to give a shout out to where I am heading. And so in March, I will be out at Artist uh, Living in Eatontown on March 11th and March 12th. On the 11th in the evening, we'll be doing a program for families. And then in the morning, the 12th, we'll be doing a um, program for professionals. So again, that's on the 11th in the evening and the 12th in the morning. And then I'll come back to Minnesota. And on March 16th, I will be at the Waters of White Bear doing a family program there. And then later in March, I'll be flying out to Pennsylvania. And I will be at Langhorn with Artist Senior Living there of Yardley and be doing a program Tuesday evening, uh, March 31st for families. And um, I'm looking forward to, to that travel. And I'm gonna mention one other one I'm doing, which will be, I'm really excited about this one. Winona Dementia Friendly Community here in Minnesota is doing kind of a week long awareness program. And I'm going to be doing a screening of the film, A Timeless Love and a talk back on April 2nd. And that will include a meal and uh, the movie and then discussion. So that starts at 4.30. And you can find more information on all of these on my website, alzheimerspeaks.com. So let's get to our show today because it's going to be pretty dang exciting, I think. Um, first of all, we are going to start uh, the show by um, doing a little uh, promo video that's going to explain a new product that's available. And there's a study being done and they're looking for 400 families to participate in this. So let's go to that first. Caregiving for people with dementia can be challenging and stressful. With that in mind, an important research project is now underway to increase the emotional and physical well-being of caregivers for people with Alzheimer's and other dementias. The National Institute on Aging funds this research, and you may be eligible to participate at absolutely no cost. Silicon Valley technology company PeoplePower and researchers at the University of California, Berkeley have developed a system designed to improve the safety of persons with dementia and mild cognitive impairment and to reduce the social isolation of their caregivers. The product incorporates sensors in the home that learn people's movement patterns, allowing the system to alert caregivers to potential risks of falls, episodes of wandering, and more. It is designed to provide in-home support to help minimize the stress related to caregiving for persons diagnosed with dementia or mild cognitive impairment. To participate, you must be a spousal or family caregiver living with a person with dementia, be fluent and literate in English, have a smartphone and wireless internet connectivity in your home and be willing to participate in study activities. If you are interested in participating, go to research.presencefamily.com for more information. You will be asked four simple questions to see if you qualify. The online questionnaire takes just a few minutes. Visit today to see if you can be part of a free program aimed at bringing welcomed relief to caregivers. We are gonna have an exciting conversation with David Moss, who is the Chief Technical Officer and the co-founder of Silicon Valley Senior Care Technology Company called People Power. And David joins us today to share news about a system his company has designed that provides help for caregivers of people living with dementia and mild cognitive impairment and you're gonna be able to get this for free. So you're gonna to wanna to listen in. It is funded by the Small Business Innovative Research Grant from the National Institute on Aging to address key issues related to caregiving uh, for persons with dementia and cognitive impairment. So um, this is a really neat opportunity and I'm so glad that we can check this out and you're going to want to check out their website today too to learn more and to leave your contact information if you're interested. Again, this is going to be a free program and for each dyad, which is a group of two people, you could earn at least $150 for participating. 
um, and that is just filling out some some questionnaires and things. And as we know, uh, caring for people with dementia can be challenging and it can be stressful. And with that in mind, you know, this project is underway to really increase that emotional and physical well-being of, of care partners for people with Alzheimer's and other dementias. And one of the things that, that I'd like to say too is, you know, when you have a sense of calm, when you're less stressed, the person with dementia is gonna be less stressed as well. And a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today, I think will be uh, give great comfort to, to those living with the disease. So David, welcome today. How are you doing? I'm great, Lori, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to have you on and talk more about, uh, about your project here because, I, again, I, I, people struggle at trying to find product services and tools and what do they pick and how much does it cost and, you know, all of those variables. So we'll, we'll dive in a little bit deeper um, on the topic itself. But before we get started, I always like to ask every one of my guests if they've been personally touched by dementia in their own family or circle of friends. Well, I definitely have uh, friends who are experiencing uh, loved ones who have dementia and Alzheimer's, um, and it's uh, it's a it's a big problem. It, it really affects people, and I'm glad to be one of the one of the people who's actually working on solutions for for this, like like you are, Lori. Well, great. Well, thank you. I want to start by asking you about your company, People Power, and why don't you tell us a little bit about what People Power is about? Yeah, so People Power Company uh, creates smart homes that take care of people. And uh, we've been working with the University of California, Berkeley, to create a system that will take care of the caregivers of people with dementia and Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment. And uh, we have, as you just mentioned, a, a program that's funded by the National Institute on Aging to help bring these solutions into 400 homes uh, where we'll be testing the effectiveness of, of this solution and hopefully find that it actually improves the lives of, uh, of caregivers. Now, the product itself is called the Presence Caregiver. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, Presence Caregiver. Uh, and uh, this is uh, when we started researching and building solutions for the senior care market many years ago, we identified two areas uh, that caregivers uh, especially have significant declines in. And one area is in anxiety and the other area is in depression. And numerous studies have shown that anxiety and depression can actually take years off of the lives of caregivers. Um, and when a caregiver is not in good mental and physical health, the quality of care that they're providing to their loved ones is much less, and it can actually cause uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment to, to increase and, and accelerate. So uh, our, our system here is uh, addressing some of these important issues. Okay. Now, the, the project itself, my understanding, is going to be a year-long research project, is that correct, to 400, that, 400 families? That's right. So, uh, we are selecting 400 families to be part of this research and to obtain this full solution all paid for as part of this National Institute on Aging grant. Uh, the program will last for a year and you can keep uh, the hardware and the, the whole smart home solution that's part of this um, even after the program ends. And this is really important. We're only accepting 400 homes into uh, this program. I know there are hundreds of thousands of people uh, or more uh, who are experiencing, uh, who are actually taking care of uh, somebody who has dementia or Alzheimer's or mild cognitive impairment. So one of the advantages your audience has is they're hearing about this first. And if they go to research.presencefamily.com, presence as in you're there, so P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, family.com, you can actually sign up and you'll be the first uh, to know when enrollment opens uh, coming up in March. Okay, that, that's very exciting, very exciting. And so you want to get your name on that list and uh, see if it's something that you'd be interested in and if, if you're picked to be part of this project. Now, my understanding is, and, and we'll dive into this a little bit more, but a person would need a smartphone to really be able to, to access some of the data and interact with the, the hardware, is that correct? That's right. Let me, let me explain a little bit about how the system works and then what requirements you'll need to actually run this. So 
So first to address anxiety, we need to make it feel like someone else is helping to watch over your loved one. And uh, we increase awareness of what's happening in the home. For example, how long did the person sleep last night? How was their quality of sleep? Did they go away from home? What time are they expected back home and more? And alerts, did somebody fall down? Did they not wake up this morning? Were there too many bathroom visits? Is the toilet flooding? And uh, because data is needed to get this kind of awareness and generate these alerts in the homes, we have to have sensors like you would find in a security system uh, that you end up just sprinkling around your home. So sensors like a passive infrared motion sensor, which detects body heat. Uh, it's not a camera. And also uh, door sensors to detect people coming in and going and water leak sensors, buttons, and, and more. Now, all of these connect into a home internet access point. So one thing you'll need is to have internet brought into the home. You'll uh, need maybe a Wi-Fi router with a spare ethernet port on the back so you can uh, connect this up. You'll also need an iPhone or an Android smartphone so you can interact and, and get alerts and see what's happening back at home. Uh, participants will need to be fluent in English. And one important thing about this particular research project is uh, the spousal or family caregiver who's, uh, uh, who's part of this, uh, this research will need to be living with a person who has received a diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's or mild cognitive impairment. And then finally, to get started, of course, you'll just sign up on research.presencefamily.com. Uh, there will be a couple questionnaire, uh, questionnaires, uh, one at the beginning of the program, and then once again every three months from, from there on out. Uh, all participants will receive the entire Presence Caregiver Research Pack. It's worth over $1,000. Uh, we've jam-packed it full of stuff for the home. And also, uh, because we've, uh, of our friends over at Amazon, participants will also receive an Amazon Echo Dot. And uh, they'll also earn a up to or uh, at least $150 for their participation in this program. So uh, pretty exciting and uh, a, a lot of benefits for being able to sign up into this. Now, I have a question for you because I literally just got this call the other night um, from uh, somebody who was in uh, one of my groups and said her husband, you know, had wandered off and she didn't know what to do. And I said, you need to sign up for this, <laughs> you know? And in our conversation, it came up that she doesn't have a smartphone. And so I suggested, and I said, I don't know if this will work, but this would be a great opportunity to loop your kids into it. They could get the alarm and then they could just call you. And, That's right. And so is, would that work if they didn't, the kids didn't live in the house, but they're, they're part of the, the network um, in terms of participating with this person with dementia, would that, that would work okay? Right, so one of the things our system does is it creates uh, what we call a trusted circle of family, friends, and neighbors who can also help watch over uh, your loved one. And when a problem happens, uh, the intelligence of this system will try to communicate outwards. So first it will try to communicate with people in the home. Um, if it can't reach somebody, if they don't have a smartphone or maybe their phone is off, uh, then it will escalate to the next level of, of people in the trusted circle, friends, family, and neighbors. And then finally, uh, if it still can't reach anybody or if uh, somebody in that circle says, let's keep escalating this, it can actually escalate to a, the emergency call center who will actually pick up the phone and make phone calls and make sure everything is okay. Oh, wonderful. Well, good. I, I'm sure she'll be um, checking you guys out because, uh, you know, I, I just... At first she said, well, there's probably others that need this more. I'm like, you need this. He's wandered off more than once now. This is, right. this is, this is what it's all about. And I think sometimes um, as family, we think, oh, it's a one-time thing. But, you know, one-time thing could be extremely dangerous. And it can and, happen at any time. And yeah. it could happen at any time. You know, my mom lived with the disease for 30 years and she never wandered. But, you know, if she was alive today and I had the opportunity to utilize something like this, I would because I know, I know now you never know. And you never right. know until you know. Exactly. And one of, the, one of the characteristics of dementia is the disease changes. It's constantly changing over time. So what we've built into our system is the ability for caregivers to selectively turn on and off services as needed. If you have a person who is at risk of wandering, you turn on the wandering detection service um, and uh, you get this added level of protection. And so the, the system can actually age or progress with the senior or the person with, uh, with dementia or mild cognitive impairment. 
Well, that's great. And one of the things that I, yeah, I liked with this system is you had said, you know, it doesn't have cameras because I know a lot of people are like, oh, the whole privacy thing. And, and sometimes I think the privacy thing is, well, they're not just going to be watching them. They're going to be watching me. And I don't want, I don't know if I want anybody watching me. And, right. and so, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting conversation when you talk about the whole camera piece. If somebody wanted to add on a camera, is that possible with this system or if they already have that in place? We do. So yes, so cameras are kind of a, a tricky subject because of the privacy concerns around it. In this particular presence caregiver pack, we explicitly do not include cameras, but that doesn't preclude a, a caregiver from adding their own cameras into this this whole experience. Our system uh, in general does integrate with cameras, but um, uh, you know, there's a time and a place for them. And uh, if that is uh, something that's needed to offer extra protection of the home, then we leave it up to the, the family caregivers to add that on themselves. Okay, uh, fair enough. Now you had mentioned the Echo Dot. So we'll, um, and I'm not overly uh, knowledgeable on the Echo and, and Alexa and all of that kind of stuff. Can you tell us how that um, will work with your system? Sure. Well, you know, when we've put Echo Dots or any kind of voice uh, device into uh, people's homes, they, they really light up. We had an experience just recently where uh, we were installing this system into a, a family where the, the husband had dementia. And when we set up that Echo Dot and asked it to play music, he lit up and he started dancing with his wife. It was a very memorable moment here. And uh, so with this Echo Dot, you can do things like play music, check the weather, um, you can get the news, you can get reminders for medication. For some uh, seniors, especially people who have memory problems, uh, they feel like this is a friend, that they can talk to this, it's not going to judge them, they can ask it questions, they can tell it to remember things for them. And uh, so this has been a really powerful tool that's been integrated with our, our system. And uh, the people who have experienced this have really loved it. Well, and one of the things that I, I like about that is it's the new norm. You know, my kids have this, my friends have this, now I have this. Yeah. And, and sometimes I think when it comes to dementia and chronic illness, we're all about being different. And this really brings people back into kind of a togetherness of, of where we're heading, which brings me to my next question. Um, you know, you've been in this industry for a while, so I'd like you to kind of share with our audience where you've seen senior care technology kind of start and begin and where you see it heading. Sure. Well, up until now, um, caring for adults has largely been a high touch field. It requires, uh, it's really completely dependent upon um, and, and it's limited by humans to do everything. And the number of people who need care is going up much faster than the number of caregivers who can be providing that care. And if you look at it at a global level, this is turning into a, a global catastrophe. In the past, uh, we have had quite primitive tools to assist these caregivers and, and to protect these seniors. Things like PERS button, a personal emergency response system, a button that you would wear around your neck. You have to keep it charged, make sure it's connected. Buttons that frankly make people feel old and embarrassed and they're forgotten to be worn more than 50% of the time and especially by people who have memory problems. We've got to do much better than this. And it's technology like People Power Company uh, is producing that's, that, that's going to help. We've worked with um, academic institutions such as UC Berkeley and Georgia Tech uh, to gain a unique perspective on this market and the problems and the solutions that need to be addressed here that really no other company can obtain. And it's inevitable that caring for people uh, will go in the direction that people power is driving this market. And we need solutions that work 24 seven in the background of your life, not requiring you to remember anything. You shouldn't have to think about it. It should be thinking about you. And it should work uh, uh, without requiring a, a person who has memory problems, especially to do anything at all. So systems like we're building here uh, will help take some of the burden off of caregivers and give some of their time back. And that's important because, again, caregivers who are in good mental and physical health will provide better care for their loved ones. It makes everyone happier and healthier. And if we can increase 
the effectiveness of caregivers' time and decrease their stress levels, connect them with their family and with other caregivers who are in similar situations. We're going to reduce costs and the quality of care that can be provided uh, by these caregivers can be much higher. It makes everyone more resilient to physical sickness and burnout and helps people live longer. I totally agree with you. One of the other things is, um, and I hear people with dementia say this to me all the time, they like, many of them like a backup system. They like a monitoring system because they worry about what if I walk off? What if I, if I wander? Will anyone find me? Will anyone know that I'm gone until it's too late? And so some of, some of these sensors, as much as we worry about invading privacy, a lot of people um, with dementia say it really, it calms them down. It helps them sleep better. Um, because they they don't feel is alone, and um, it, it you know they feel that it is um, being done in a respectful fashion. You know sometimes, like I said, people might have some issues with cameras, and and others are perfectly fine. So I think it's important for families to have this discussion and talk about the benefits. You know in this uh, in this space. Um, and you're exactly right. We, you know, this need is increasing and we have fewer and fewer staff available to meet this need. And more and more people are saying they want to stay at home. So we've got to come up with solutions that are, are going to allow um, that life and that dignity and reduce stress and, and give that support um, on, a, on a safe manner. You also had mentioned, you know, the, the, um, the fall buttons or the wandering pendants or the watches and things like that. And uh, those have been a struggle for so many people because again, it points out that they're different. And when we look at the smart homes people are building, they're putting in these centers, sensors, they're telling their furnace to turn on or, or, you know, um, put the heat up or turn the air conditioning on or whatever it is, or get the lights going, set the music. And so this is becoming more of a natural thing that, that people are embracing. And so I think that takes some of the scary out of this and some of the, Oh, you need help, you know, right. um, peace in this um, for not only the person with dementia, but those that are caring for them and, and to be able to get those alerts are, are really important. Um, David, I wanted to talk to you about some of the, I mean, you, your company has got to just see this huge opportunity in technology, in senior care space. And, and this is a, a, you know, a wonderful program that you have. Do you see this expanding at all? Or, you know, what, what's your vision for all of Yeah, that? well, I think there's a lot of opportunities in this space. In addition to what you just mentioned, Lori, enabling people to live at their own homes longer, which who, do, who doesn't want to do that? I think over 90% of uh, the people out there want to stay at home and, uh, and age there. But um, I think one of the biggest opportunities in, that's upcoming in this space is really to create solutions that help address depression. And one of the most profound causes of depression is social isolation and loneliness. You know, there's a lot of things that change in the lives of caregivers that cause them to disconnect from their social networks. And especially when it comes to dementia and Alzheimer's, people become embarrassed and they become ashamed and they start covering up. So this leads to people making a difficult situation into an isolated situation. It's not healthy for caregivers. And the benefit of having a quality social network around you is comparable to quitting smoking or losing weight. Uh, so if you look at our name, my, the name of my company is People Power Company. I believe people and families need to be at the center of everything that we do. And we're exploring all kinds of new ways to bring families back together, even though they're scattered uh, throughout the country and throughout the world, and to connect people with caregivers and experts around them who can answer their questions and, uh, and, and share in this experience. Other companies and organizations uh, don't take that approach. Um, Many smart home companies today focus on the gadgets, the engineering side of this, uh, home automation and, and security. Um, we don't see companies out there that have the level of sophistication and expertise that people power has in artificial intelligence and being able to make it feel like someone is there helping you and watching over your home. And we certainly don't see other companies making 
meaningful strides towards uh, getting people connected in new ways to combat isolation and loneliness. So I think there are some really big opportunities out there uh, that will continue to address some of the, the large needs of this, this exploding market uh, of senior care in general. Great insight. I, you know, I just hear the passion in your voice. And I always just align with that because, you know, the need is so great. And granted, everybody, you know, wants to make money at this, but it sounds like at the heart, um, you, you really see and feel the need on a very personal level. And, you know, when you're talking about things like, like loneliness and depression, um, that can swell up and just take over somebody's life um, really easily. Um, especially when they are caring for another or when they get um, diagnosed with a chronic illness and, and trying to, you know, help that whole mental health state that we're hearing so much about um, these days. I, I think it's critical. So can you explain kind of where, where your inspiration for the company comes from and where, where that deep bellied passion is? Um, sure. Well, you know, this is a very, this is one of the most meaningful things that I've ever done um, in my career and in the careers of uh, all of the, the all-stars that we've brought on board our company and the people that we work with at these research institutions. Um, uh, while many of us have created uh, technology that you probably use in your daily life today, but you're not even aware that it's been touched by some people on, on our team, this is by far the most meaningful thing we've we've done and um, you know one of the things that my company did was create a kind of a new market back in 2013 the iPhone 5 was coming out and uh, I looked at that and realized that everyone's getting rid of their old phone what are they gonna do with that old phone so we interviewed a whole bunch of people and found out that 25% uh, of the people were going to uh, uh, give their phone away 25% uh, were gonna give it to a, a, or sell it or give it to a friend or family member. Um, but, you know, over the half of the people out there didn't know what they were going to do with their old phone. And so what we created was an app called Presence, which is sort of uh, the heritage of where we are today. Presence is an app that turns a spare smartphone or tablet into a free internet security camera. And while our intentions there started more on the security angle, we actually found many of our users we're using this for senior care and monitoring and making sure loved ones were okay. Um, we had heartwarming stories to horrific stories. People checking in and getting peace of mind that their dad or their mom is, is doing okay, being able to talk back with them, even though they couldn't pick up the phone. Um, all the way to uh, one of my favorite users out of Rochester, New York, um, used this app. He got his niece's phone, installed our app presence, and he actually caught one of his professional caregivers stealing from him. And that was one of the horrific stories. So, uh, but it was through this app and the millions of users that we, uh, we gained that we were able to start to have conversations with these people about what is going to be really meaningful for you and, and have a positive impact on your lives. Uh, and, and for me, my grandmother lives alone and this same system is installed in her house. I, I get peace of mind that she's doing okay. I get alerted if anything goes wrong. And same thing with uh, my friends, or, I'm sorry, my family, my aunts and uncles, um, who also can know if anything's going wrong. My cousins, and uh, uh, so aunts, uncles, and cousins, we don't always talk to each other, but the system will remind one of us every day that we should be reaching out to grandma with a phone call or a picture to share, and it helps coordinate the lives of uh, everybody who's part of this family. Uh, my co-founder, Jean Wong, has a mother who lives alone. She's fallen several times now. What's also important is that this same system for uh, my grandmother and Jean's mom, who are younger and uh, you know quite capable, they can actually use this themselves as a security system, and it feels uh, like something that they're in control of. So. Um, anyway, there's not one person out there who I have told our story to who doesn't have a story back from me about taking care of someone else or someone who's been impacted by dementia or Alzheimer's. And I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to be working on uh, problems that actually are, are meaningful and uh, important to solve in people's lives.
Question for you on the, the, the presence program you were just talking about in terms of alerting families, you know, family members to contact, uh, you know, grandma um, every day kind of rotating. Is that part of this system that people are signing up for or is that? It is. Okay. Yeah. So this is called the social connector and it's real simple to set up. You simply add people to your trusted, uh, your, your trusted circle. And you specify when you add people, whether they live there, whether they're a friend or family member, or whether they should just get social reminders only. And then when you turn on the social uh, connector service, um, it just begins running automatically. Those other people don't need the app. They'll get an SMS message on their phone uh, once a day uh, for the person whose day it is to, to reach out. It's kind of interesting how it works, Lori. So what will happen is in the morning, um, you'll get an alert like I'll, I'll get an SMS message on my phone that says David today is your day to reach out to grandma with a phone call or a picture to share um, partway through the day the system will have recognized that my grandmother left the house um, she'll come back home and a little bit later I'll get a message saying David grandma may have just gotten back home a few minutes ago now might be a good time to call and at the end of the day I, I get a follow-up message David did you reach out to grandma today and I'll say yes and the system will say great job what do you recommend the next person talk with grandma about? And then I can leave a comment and keep the conversation going for the other family members who will be participating in the coming days. That is really cool. Now, I, I want you just to clarify for some people who might not know what SMS message is. Yeah, so this is a text message that anybody can receive on their phone. It's a short message. And uh, so anytime somebody texts you, you're getting an SMS message. Okay. Um, so sometimes we use terms and, and not everybody <laughs> knows what they are. So I just wanted to make sure uh, we're all on the same page with that. Um, have you incorporated anything in terms of, of music into this program? Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things with, with music out there, uh, music and memories and uh, different uh, different sets with that they are using iPads and different different formats, but I could see that being um, really helpful in this as well. Having you know calming music or uh, some kind of music that motivates somebody. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, "Yeah, one person liked a certain kind of music, and he'd only get into the shower if that was playing." And so they were having issues with grooming, and so that worked really really well yeah. um, to kind of help. Is that something that? that this does or that you would consider doing? Well, yes. So music is, is really impactful, especially on the lives of uh, people with dementia or Alzheimer's. And uh, today music is brought out in our system really through that Amazon Echo uh, interface. So you can ask it to play any kind of station or song and it's going to uh, uh, play music for you. On our roadmap, we have other uh, uh, areas where music will begin to emerge um, in our products over the coming year. Okay, wonderful. Because I, I, you know, I can see this is uh, this unit is is primarily for the house, and I'm just thinking if somebody goes out and if they've got a smartphone, I mean, just even knowing where that music is, um, sometimes it's just uh, getting people to understand that connection and that resources are available because we can all download stuff and and find uh, playstations, but sometimes we don't think of it because we're just too overloaded. Um, with all the other other tasks that, that we're doing. Um, right. Speaking of music, I just have to have you talk a little bit about People Power's band because you guys, <laughs> you guys do some fun things there and people might enjoy that as well. Yeah, so you know, any company that can actually play jazz together can make great products together. And that's what we do. It's a, you know, you'll find articles about some of the big uh, companies in Silicon Valley and, and beyond um, having their own bands. We have had a band for a very long time. We're called the People Power Band. And uh, we play uh, uh, gigs throughout the Bay Area at uh, conferences and VIP receptions and, and more. Um, we have a, a number of very talented people in our band. I play trumpet and uh, my co-founder and CEO plays sax and flute, a little bit of guitar. He sings, his daughter's a beautiful singer. We have uh, other, uh, other people at People Power who sing and uh, play percussion, uh, drums, uh, guitar, other, in other instruments. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's important, I think, because you can't just be doing one thing, uh, your whole life. You got to have other, other hobbies and things that, that you, you do. So, uh, to do this as a team, uh, is a lot of fun at people power. And you can find our, our music online. If you go to YouTube and search for the people power band, 
uh, you'll see some videos and uh, and even live performances we've uh, we've done in the past. Wonderful. Well, I think that speaks a lot for your company and and like you said, the the inner workings because um, what you're doing with the the presence um, project yourself and then playing music, neither of those are easy roads when you're collaborating and working together and takes a, a certain skill set um, to be able to do and also the passion behind it um, to be able to to pull this all together. So um, for people to learn more about, about um, the Presence Project, um, where do you recommend that they go? So if you want to sign up for this program, go to research.presencefamily.com. And we're going to be opening up recruiting uh, soon, but uh, research.presencefamily.com will explain everything that's in this program and allow you to sign up. Again, we're only allowing 400 homes into this, uh, into this program. So uh, it's important to get signed up quickly. And uh, you know, your audience has, a, has an advantage here, Lori. So uh, uh, you know, I think this is exciting for everybody who can participate in this. I agree. And I thank you so much for um, taking the time to be with us, David. It, this is an exciting program. And please keep us posted um, as things progress. I, I would love to hear your results after the study as well. And um, again, really encourage people to go to their website and check that out. And we will have that listed for you. Um, so again, if you don't have a, a pen and paper, you'll be able to see that on the blog or the radio page that you were on. But it's research.presence, and that's P R E um, S E N C E family.com. Research.presence. Uh, family.com. Thank you again and have a blessed week. Bye now. Thank you, Lori. Bye.